This video shows how I set up a Skywalker airframe to perform aerial mapping using a Canon point-and-shoot camera loaded with Canon Hack Developers Kit, CHDK. By using CHDK, I'm able to use my RC transmitter to control the camera remotely. I used a Skywalker airframe with 1900 millimeter wings, standard fuselage. I cut a hole in the bottom, placed a piece of high quality acrylic in, and used a standard kitchen sponge to mount the camera with some Velcro so I can take downward facing pictures while the camera stays protected. I've tried three different cameras so far. CHDK works on almost all Canon point and shoot cameras. The SD1200 is very light. It's a 10 megapixel camera. It has worked very well. I also modified a Canon A490 to capture near-infrared imagery based on the publiclaboratory.org tutorial. The only additional modification I made was that I replaced the near-infrared filter with a piece of developed but not exposed film. My main mapping camera currently for full color is the Canon SX260. It's a nice camera, 12 megapixels, captures HD video as well. Currently I'm mainly using it to capture stills. Um, it is significantly heavier than the other two cameras. To control the camera I soldered a USB cable, just the black and red leads, to an E-Flight LED controller. The E-Flight LED light controller connects from the RC receiver to a modified USB cable and so when I trigger a switch on my RC transmitter, it sends the appropriate signal to the USB cable via the light controller and initiates an intervalometer script on board the camera. Once you have CHDK loaded on an SD card, you put it in the camera and plug in the USB cable. You turn it on using the play button and initiate the script that I'm using by pressing the shutter button. At that point, the script can be initiated using the trigger on board your RC transmitter. Currently, I'm using an available dial for my trigger switch. The script that I'm using is very simple. I combined several scripts that I found online and then stripped them down to the bare minimum, and it allows me to set the interval between pictures in milliseconds so essentially what I did was I, I created uh, six scripts, one with no delay, one with one second, two second, three second, four second, and five second delay, so I can swap between them. Uh, lately I've been using a two second delay, and I'm still getting a lot of overlap, so it's very good, and I can always scale it back as needed. I'm still doing a lot of testing. This script that I'm running here has no delay built in, so it's taking pictures as fast as the camera can given the parameters that are set. So it's still displaying a picture in between. If you needed faster, there are ways to write a more detailed script or change your settings so you use burst mode. There's, there are other things. The scripts that I have available are still faster than I need. In this case, I load the script that has a five second delay to show the difference. And you can tell that it, it takes five seconds between the shots. It's consistent. I found that shutter speeds of a thousand or higher are best as long as your lighting is sufficient so that your ISO settings do not introduce noise. So what I do is I set it to a thousand or 1250 and set the ISO settings to auto. I also set my white balance to daylight so that there's no shifting in white balance during flight. This camera, the SX260, fits inside the Skywalker airframe, but it fits very snugly. Um, it's one of the reasons why I purchased the new Skywalker airframe. I was hoping that it would be an easier fit and potentially I would be able to put a roll gimbal in which I'm still working on. To remove the camera, I simply power it off. This retracts the lens and it's very easy to pull out. I hope this video is useful for you. I'm doing my best to try to simplify the 
process for myself and in the way that I communicate it to others. Building an unmanned aerial mapping platform is certainly challenging, but uh, there are ways of keeping it simple, and that's what I'm trying to do.